I mean, it's an exciting time. You know, they've literally admitted there's UFOs now. But like, I love that everything else is so bad that people are just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's just UFOs, you know? So I guess that really describes the state of things when, you know, things are that bad. They're like, ah, unidentified flying objects? You're like, yeah, but inflation, guys. The next guy we're going to bring on, you're very familiar with, his name is Alexander Calvert. Let's give him a big hand as he comes to the stage. Okay, hello guys, how are you? I, uh, I didn't expect this set. Um, the carpet's from The Shining. The sad, divorcee, chic, mid-century modern furniture. Lovely. How are you guys doing? Great. Um, yeah, no, uh, I was literally just texting my agent, so uh, I was like, I wonder what I can and can't say. So I will uh, do my best to, uh, you know, try to answer your questions uh, in the meantime. Um, yeah, I don't really have any opening monologues or anything, so if you guys have questions, I will go from there. Uh, I know some people are really good at that, but I just can't give you a monologue, which is bad as an actor, but you know, yeah. Can we start with you, please? Hello. Hi. I'm Abby Lynn. Yes. Um, this microphone is very tall, and I'm not. Um, ooh. Everything's fine. Um, so I was wondering, is there a character that you think of just in general, a book, movie, that like you think is a really well-written character, but they would be like insufferable or like annoying to deal with in person? Probably most characters. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. Would you ever want to... I mean, if you, if you like Taxi Driver, you probably wouldn't want to hang out with Travis Bickle. If you saw The Shining, you're like, oh, it's really well written, but you probably wouldn't want to hang out with Jack Torrance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the incredible part about the, the medium of the television and film stuff is getting to play characters or see characters that you would never want to deal with in real life, but are entertaining to watch. Like, uh, I don't know, you'd probably never want to hang out with the Joker, or would you? Um, no, no. Is there a character you'd want to play that, like, have you ever seen a character, like, that you haven't played that you're like, that'd be really fun to play? Yeah, like, most, most characters. I'd be like, that looks like a lot of fun. Um, specifically is what you're asking. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> I guess, what I've been watching recently. I watch a lot of Mad Men. Um, so there's a character on the show named Peggy Olsen. I don't know if you guys have seen the show. Who said that? Yeah. Good for you. Uh, she'd be a great character to play. She's like very young and ambitious, but is getting completely, you know, screwed over in her job because she's young and a woman in the 1960s. Mm. So I might be typecast for that role, but I think that'd be <laughs> really fun. Gotcha. Well, thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. I'm like really sure this microphone. I'm getting that as a theme so far. Um... So this is my first convention. I'm actually freaking out right now. <laughs> Take a big breath. It's fine. So my question is, if you get Starbucks, what's your Starbucks order? Uh, I got an iced coffee. <laughs> I know. Not very exciting. No double frappuccino, extra blah, 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 shot of something soy latte, rather. Yeah, no, the iced coffee is probably good. It's hot. It's hot right now. It's summertime. You know, I'm tired of sweating, so I figured this would be a good way to start my day, you know? Yeah. Why? What's yours? Um, caramel ribbon crunch. A what? Caramel ribbon crunch. So do you ever feel like you're just like eating candy or like a milkshake? Like, Sometimes, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I saw this TikTok the other day, and it was like some girl at Starbucks, and she's like making adults milkshakes at five in the morning. Just like. And I'm like, oh, she seemed really mad about this, you know? <laughs> yeah. I know. Boring. Hello. Hi. Um, What's your shirt say? Rocky's Bar. Do you own Rocky's Bar? No. It's oh. a joke from a show you might know. What show? Am I allowed to say it? Yeah, you're allowed to say it. I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Supernatural? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Uh, 
no, I thought I thought it was like like I was like I don't know. Hogan's no, it's not run, a legit like, bar, but it's a cool thing to. Okay, um, I don't know. Maybe you're a bartender. I don't know. No, I'm a teacher. So you're a bartender for kids. Yes. I understand perfectly. I make their dreams come true. You make their drinks come true? <laughs> their dreams. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was confused. Anyways. Okay. I do have lunch duty sometimes, but... Um, what does that mean? You have to make sure they could open their milk and all of that. Ooh, so they're, they're like high school kids? <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Dummies. Got it. Um, if you were an action figure, what were your, would your accessories be? God, uh, oh. <laughs> good question. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to be real creative today. Um, I'm trying. He'd have a stack of books. Not me, you. Okay. I know. I'm okay. saying he, the made up action figure, not me because I'm just a guy. Uh, he would have a stack of books, uh, a motorcycle and a shotgun. Good job. Yeah, I'd be like, what do you read? And I'd be like, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's all I got. Hi. Hi. So there's going to be a cryptid-themed convention happening. A cryptic? Yes. Like the uh, Jersey Devil and Loch Ness Monster and Sasquatch and stuff like that happening around here in a few weeks. What kind of that kind of thing do you enjoy most like the mothman or do you never really give any thought to it are you going to this yes are you going to someone no well <laughs> i think you should um wh like which one would i like or what yeah like are you ever do you ever like find yourself like looking into bigfoot sightings mothman sightings jersey devil or stuff like never that? never heard of the jersey devil other than the hockey team really uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I guess, I mean, the alien one is a big focus, you know? Uh, how did they move those stones to the pyramid? I don't know. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I mean, Loch Ness, I guess, is kind of a fun one. In, in Canada, we have the one for the Ogopogo. I don't know if you've heard of that. What's that? Uh, you know, it's, supposed to, it's very similar to Loch Ness Monster kind of thing, but it's supposed to be, I think, more of a snake. Uh, but what they're speculating now is that, like, have you ever seen a sturgeon fish? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're literal fucking dinosaurs. So, like, those people are like, oh, maybe it was a sturgeon they saw. But, yeah, it's mostly the alien stuff, I think, is really the, the interesting one, you know? I've never seen an alien, though, although some people I've met have. Uh, ask David about that. I'm sorry? I said ask David about that. The catch? <laughs> yeah. Has he had an alien encounter? No, I asked him a question about UFOs, and he got really excited earlier. I mean, it's an exciting time, you know? They've literally admitted there's UFOs now. But, like, I love that everything else is so bad that people are just like, oh, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. It's fine. It's just UFOs, you know? So I guess that really describes the state of things when, you know, things are that bad. They're like, ah, oh, unidentified flying objects? They're like, yeah, but inflation, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry for the young people. I know, you're going to be like... Inflation? I don't need my bike tires inflated. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Um, do you have a favorite museum you want to visit? Do I have a favorite what? Museum. Museum? Yeah. Like in the world? Uh, yeah, art museum or... Because I saw on your Instagram stories that you often go to art museums. Yes, I'm very lonely. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I went to the Warhol Museum last night. That was cool because I've never, uh, I didn't get to go last time I was in Pittsburgh, so I really thought I should go. Um, I mean, the MoMA in New York is pretty incredible, um, but I'd say also the Whitney is great. Um, if you've been to that one, um, I mean, you're from Europe. You've probably seen a lot of museums. Uh, you've been to the Louvre? No? No. Uh, you're so close to Paris, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also, what's it called? The, the K8 or the K9 in Dusseldorf's really good. Um, I was there before Purgatory Convention last year. Yep. See? You get it. Um, yeah, no. Is there somewhere I should go? Um, Berlin and Munich have wonderful, too. 
Berlin, I was a little more focused on like dancing and, you know, not going to museums. Uh, I did go to some really cool churches there, though. That was cool. Yeah. Wow, museum questions. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hi, so I don't have a museum question. Okay, good, because I'm all out of museums. Cool, I have a food question. Oh, I'm all out of food, too. <laughs> okay, so I asked Rich this, um, but it's very, very weird. It's from Kings of Khan. But what kind of broccoli would you think, like what cook, like if you steamed it or you fried it or you grilled it, would best reflect, I did have to Google this, where you were born in Vancouver. What kind of broccoli would represent Vancouver? Yes. <sighs> uh, <laughs> good question. I don't know. There's a lot of really great uh, Asian cuisine in Vancouver. So someone a lot more talented than me would make you a fantastic dish. Uh, but that will not be me. Uh, what I would do, though, is I'd probably treat it like cauliflower. I'd get the garlic and I'd chuck it in the oven and just really crisp it up, you know? Just like a crunchy garlic, you know? Crunchy broccoli. Yeah, Rich gave me a recipe for a steamed broccolini, so. Broccolini, also fantastic. I mean, Rich has a family, so he has to probably, like, provide for them and cook. I don't. <laughs> so takeout's a lot easier for me. Uh, but God bless him, you know? He's got kids to take care of. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Broccoli. Wow. Broccoli. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hi. Sorry about the stool. I hurt my back this morning. <laughs> Doing what? I... Br opening a bag. Oh, Let God. Ask. It was, I had a bad morning. Oh, I'm sorry. So I've got two questions, if you don't mind. Okay. On, on behalf of all the people in this room who have really amazing cameras, could we ask you to take off your hat? No. <laughs> What's your next question? <laughs> I can ask, I guess. But <laughs> So the other question is, what question would you like us to ask you, and what is the answer to that question? That's not a question, though. It is. That's like a speculative, imaginative question. <laughs> We're in hard times right now. Wow. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it was, it was a real challenge for me because I really actually do not like talking about myself. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, this is tough because I'd way rather tell you an antidote or, uh, you know, something specific that way. Um, do you have any near death experiences other than hurting your back? <laughs> That's my question for you. For me? Yeah. Have I had a near death experience? Yeah. No, I'm not that deep. <laughs> it's not deep. I don't know. You could have like been driving here and be like, oh, God, and then like swerved out of the way. I'm not sure. Um, no. How about you? See, the question things are tough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the question was, what question would you like us to ask you? <sighs> and what is the answer to that question? Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Take my stool and go now. I know. Uh, uh, your, 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 your top five Scorsese movies. Go. <laughs> Scorsese, Scorsese? I don't know. I'm not from New York. I don't know shit. I, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't. Oh. We need to get you some glasses, I think. You are? Oh, it says six week residency. As in, how long I'd like to be somewhere before I get completely bored and want to kill myself. Hello. Hi, my name is Eden. Um, my question, Where's Adam? Hmm? Where's Adam? <laughs> if I was a guy. Oh, good, yes. My question is, how do you think your character would react to receiving a pair of adult-sized light-up sketchers? Oh. And who would have gifted them? I don't know who would have gifted them to them, but I, I would probably be pretty fired up, you know? <laughs> uh, I remember one of those kids came to school with the light-up shoes, and I think he became the most popular kid in grade two for, like, a very short amount of time. I think, though, the thing that happened in my as a kid... Here, here's a story of a question that I wouldn't have asked myself. I remember I had these really sick shoes that I got from Walmart, and I thought they were great because they had great grip on them. And I remember I could run up the slide. But then, this is also a different time, not 2023. 20, but I realized like later on that they kind of had like a high heel on them, you know? And I was super stoked about these shoes. And then someone's like, are those girls' shoes? And I had to return the shoes. Aww. 
it, it's a small town, guys. Don't let's not pretend this was normalized. Uh, yeah, so that was a, that was a fun one. I didn't get the light up sneakers though, which would have been lit, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Eden. Yeah. Great name though. Wow, so biblical. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh, it's loud. Okay. Um. So, I know that you did listen to a Robin Rich's podcast, The Kings of Con one, and you gave Rob some critique about it, I think. Yes. So I'm wondering, have you like kept up with it, and do you think they've improved any, or? <laughs> well, okay, so I was listening to Robin Rich's podcast because I was listening to a lot of them like during the pandemic, and then they started the podcast, and then I was on their podcast, but then they... I think this was the last one I listened to because they shot an entire episode and Rich just decided that that was when he had like, he's like, well, I'm just not going to be here for this episode. And he stepped in and out of the episode, no joke, six times. So I was like, why am I bothering to listen to this fucking podcast at this point of people that I really like? But like he was getting what the gas changed or something. The propane. He's getting new propane for the propane tank. I totally get it. I understand. However, maybe you don't record a podcast during that. No. <laughs> so yes, we were in D.C. and then I had a couple drinks and I t pulled Rob aside. I was like, "Hey man, hey man, I got to tell you, uh, that was one of the worst podcasts I've ever listened to." <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I mean, they, they had the personal podcast for a while, and then they started doing the, like, then and now podcast. So, I mean, I understand that they have less time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what I did really enjoy, though, especially during the pandemic, was, like, I missed their dynamic, and then there was no Kings of Con on, and, you know, it was just, I felt like I got to, like, hang out with them again. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, what what I miss on the podcast? Well, Rich leaves less, but... <laughs> I love that. He leaves less. <laughs> yeah, it's just the same. They're just talking about whatever. <laughs> no, which is great. I like I like a hangout podcast, but like, you know, I just love it if you could stay in the room. Devil yeah, well, Rob now he like brings it up now and he's like, Oh, you can't Rich can't you can't leave. Alcal already told us like it was bad. <laughs> was I okay. I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was poorly timed on my part, but I I definitely wasn't wrong. No. <laughs> no. It'd be like watching a movie and like halfway through the guy just leaves and you're like <laughs> Sure. Sure. Uh I'll bring it up with them, please. <laughs> All right. All right, thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So my question is music. Who would you say is your favorite band of all time? Aqua. And really? No. <laughs> And right now. Um, now. Hmm. Who's your favorite band? Ever? Green Day. Green Day. Okay. I saw someone's Starbucks today. They had like the little post-it sign of things they wanted to do. And one of them just said, see Avenge Sevenfold Live. We saw that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you see the, the scariest, darkest one though that said, there was someone that's like, what do you want to do in 2023? And someone just wrote, quit gambling. Oh. <laughs> Which like I immediately a, took a photo of. I was like, this is dark. Um, there was like an eat the rich and then marry rich. Like right yeah. each other. It'd be funny though. As soon as that person became rich, they'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What was with all that eating talk? Yeah. No. I'm actually happy chilling. Um, hmm. All time. It's really hard to say. The killers are really big for me for a while. Nice. Those Hot. first two albums were really great. Hot Fuss and Samstown were... Yeah. Um, right in my era, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was young, 2004. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Didn't God, have it was to fun. call it out. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, I mean, like last week when we were young. Obviously. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Like, I, I guess I usually listen to more like solo musicians versus than like bands, quote unquote. Okay. Uh, I'd be like Frank Ocean's got to be a top ten guy. Nice. Um, what am I listening to recently? I'm listening to Bill Evans. Okay. I love that. Don't know what that is. I don't know. <laughs> what else am I listening to? Hmm. I'm listening to uh, Shania Twain, Party for Two. Nice. Uh, I'm, 
I'm listening to jazz, I know, really cool. And I'm listening to Midland, Rufus Del Sol, the new Lana, MTV Unplugged, Toxicity, System of a Down. Nice, nice. Uh, what else is fun? Yeah, I'd say that. Oh, and Cardi B. <laughs> Gotta love Cardi B. <laughs> Don't know what the B stands for, but good for her. <laughs> you know? So? Uh, yeah, all time. All time, I don't know. I'm not like a Stones guy. I'm not a Beals guy. Nah. I know. No, I lean more towards Queen. Queen, yeah. 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 The Queen movie was really funny because in the original script, the band was like, it's like, all right, yeah, so he dies about halfway through, and they're like, and the story's just about us. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, I don't think people are going to watch this. No, no, probably no. not. No, he was good, though. Yeah. Sorry, that's a variety pack, but I don't know. It's fine. My brain is broken, so. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I'm 18, so I was wondering if you had any advice for me as I become an adult and like go off to college. Oh, God. <laughs> Stay off TikTok. That's a lot I already am on it too much. <laughs> exactly. Stay off TikTok. Uh, are you going to college? Yeah. Well, college is a waste of money. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. It depends. Well, what are you taking? Do you mean like what I'm majoring in? That's, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, I didn't go to college, imaging? so. What? Medical imaging. Medical imaging. Great. So you're going to make money right away. <laughs> I don't know yet. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, no, I don't really have any advice. Uh, you know, don't, don't do all the drugs. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't go into too much debt. I'll try my best. Uh, I know you're at a college, so that's expensive. Um, what else? Talk to your mother. Mom's probably, well, not everybody is a good mom, but, you know. Uh, talk to your family. What else? Uh, I don't know. Travel. Go, go somewhere you didn't think you'd go. All right. I know. Not good advice. Uh, yeah. No one really ever gave me any advice, and I wish they would have. What do I wish they would have told me? Uh, yeah, I know. I just say travel. Go somewhere you, where, where's the furthest away you've been from home? Um, I went to Florida with my school without my parents. But I'm just happy you made it back from Florida. Yeah, I mean, we got stuck at a Walmart for five hours. Do tell. Uh, the band, uh, the, we went with the band, and on the way back, the What driver, instrument do you play? Hmm? What instrument do you play? I play the mellophone. It's a big trumpet. It's a big trumpet? Yeah. I've never heard of that. It's silver. It's really cool. Okay, great. Um, and on the way back, the bus driver was going all over the road, so mid drive. Were they drunk? We don't know. Okay. <laughs> were they? I, they're doing the the math. I have no idea. We we were on rumble strips like almost the entire way. Damn. My band director def, like fired him in the middle, so we had to wait for a new bus driver to come and get us, and it took like five to six hours. Wow. Okay. Great. Anyways, <laughs> that's great. Okay. I'm I'm glad you guys made it back. <laughs> Me too. It was really long. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, like, go to, go further, go further than Florida. Okay. That's all I'd say. I'll try my best. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck in college. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's very loud. <laughs> it is a microphone. Spoiler. Oh. Sorry, I'm also short. Uh, um, big theme here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to keep that going. Um, I wanted to say, um, first, I really admire, like, how much you care about your work and everything that you put into it, like... Woo! <laughs> no, don't sell yourself Woo! short. I think you put a lot into it, more than you'd say you would, but I really admire that about you, and I wanted to know, like, what inspires you to, like, keep caring about it, especially in times like this, when people just don't care about art? Like, how do you keep caring about it? Uh, that's a, that's a deep question. Um, I mean, first of all, this was the only job I ever wanted to do. There was, by the time I was 15 years old, I was, uh, I basically said to myself, I was like, I want to do this or nothing else or, uh, or I don't want to be here. So I was very determined to do the job, first of all. So I think there's part of your, I don't know, your dream that keeps you going that way. And then also you know, the, the work does really matter to, to so much of us. Um, and like every person that you meet this weekend or, you know, that you, you know, we're lucky enough to be on a show or have worked in the past or have future projects. 
it really does mean the world to like, I promise you, like 95% of actors. There's a certain amount of people where, don't get me wrong, it's a job. So you, you go like, yeah, I need a paycheck and I need to pay my rent and, you know, continue to live. But like, you know, we have people that have like, even if they book a TV movie, like they can tell you the experience from the TV movie and how much it meant to them and the project. Uh, so I guess just like passion for the medium and to like getting to share. Uh, I guess ultimately too, it's, you know, if you're at a low point in your life, I think, you know, for the average person that's not involved in it, like, I think it's really easy to not care about a museum or a painting or a poem or whatever. But like, I think some people in this room know when there's a crisis in your life or if you feel like shit, one of the first places you reach to is, you know, is art in some form. Um, and that's like a reason for a lot of people to continue. And uh, yeah, I definitely would count myself as one of those people that getting to do something artistic with my life is the biggest meaningful thing in, in my life. So uh, yeah, that keeps me going for sure. Thank you. Yeah, and no problem. I also wanted to say just from one artist to another, thank you for caring about it. Oh yeah. I think it matters a lot that you care. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, go to a museum, read a poem, get a beer, do something, you know? Hello. Hello. Um, I was going to ask you about the stories that I have heard of you delivering care packages to coworkers when they were stuck in their hotel rooms under quarantine. Yes. <laughs> Any fun ones of those to share? Because now I'm just picturing you trying to climb the slide in your light-up shoes. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> wanting, to, wanting that for your character. Because, oh, that would have been really fun, wouldn't it? Well, there are behind-the-scenes photos of Misha and Mark Pellegrino playing on certain playground equipment in between takes. And now I'm just, let's add your character into that. Yeah. Uh, well, once you know that, because Misha is truly, at his core, a child. Yeah. So, uh, it we makes do know. a lot of sense now, you know, all the charities, you know, all the way he helps people. He's still six. Um, and God bless him. Uh, sorry. And me bless him. Um, but, uh, um, sorry, what was your question? <laughs> I was going to ask you if you have any fun stories about being the go-to call person for well, making quarantine I mean, deliveries. I felt terrible because like at the time I was living in Vancouver and they were all coming there and they were just getting absolutely boned where they're like, all right, um, we're going to put you in a hotel for two weeks straight. I think Jake and Rob were like, they had like a whiskey bottle that they would like pass up to each other and they're like on FaceTime and stuff. I don't know. It's such an incredibly weird time in all of our lives. Um, but I just felt terrible. So I was just like, if you need anything, like I'm your guy. Uh, I just remember like Rich opening the door and we like didn't know the like protocol. So he's kind of like standing back there and I'm like on the other side of the hallway, like, Hey, hey man, you're like, uh, what's, it's, no, it's cool. It's cool. I'll just leave it there for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, I would do that for anyone in the cast, obviously. Was uh, Rich the one who was specifically asking for a larger coffee mug? Yes, he did ask for... He's like, not a small one, but a large one. Uh, but then he think, I think he tried to give it back to me at the end. Um, not sure why. He did get me some champagne, though. That was very nice of him. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so in your quarantine, what would you need me to bring you? I would probably partake in that whiskey bottle that's getting passed along balconies. The COVID bottle, if you will. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> well, At that point, you're like, I'm already in isolation. Who cares? Pretty much. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Two weeks in? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> well, that was the first initial problem of, of the, the COVID thing. It was like, everyone's like, all right. Two weeks. And then like two weeks. So you're like, I got to stop drinking wine. Um, <laughs> probably should do some exercise, do some other things. Uh, you know, tough lessons for everyone. I bet, yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hello. Hi. Oops, sorry. Um, so, Mike is on. <laughs> yeah. uh, kind of a, a two-part question. So just wondering, do you have pets? And do you have any fun pet-related, funny, interesting, just 
not depressing pet-related stories, or for your own pets, or you want to hear about when I have any, to put my dog down. What? No. Okay. <laughs> I will. Anything you want to tell us, or um, you know, anything that might have happened involving animals while you were working that you are allowed to talk about. Any interesting stories? Um, I don't have any pets. I wish I did, but like. I don't know. If you leave places a lot, it makes it really tough to have... The pets don't appreciate it, you know? They don't go, where were you for the last three weeks? Uh, cats, you know. Cats go, why weren't you gone longer? It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll rub your leg a little. Eh, never mind. Um, my parents, though, have a, have a, uh, a golden retriever, and she's very cute and very dumb. So... Uh, yeah, she's been a real source of joy uh, throughout the family. She jumps a lot. Her name's Maple, Aww. which I thought was adorable. Um, usually I try to get friends that have dogs because then I can just take their dog. But then, you know, you still got to pick up their shit. So, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no. I'm trying to think of a... I feel like everyone tells a story about their dog, but it's like telling a story about your kid. You know? It only matters to you. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, you're so cute today. You drew me a smiley face. I'm like, great. You know, my dog has never, you know, driven me, a, give me a smiley face though. Or anything. I, I don't know if you can talk about anything that's happened work related with an animal or not right now. No, I mean, I'm trying to think. I've never had any like terrible onset experiences other than like uh, a snake. I did like handle a snake, which I really didn't enjoy. Because no one tells you, you think they're going to be like wet and slippery, but they're actually kind of just like very sleek. I don't know. There was also like a giant like Britney Spears style snake that they left for me. Uh, people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Certain people will. Uh, MTV Video Awards, 2000 something. Was it Gimme More? I don't want to hear about your guys and what you're doing in your spare time, Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that was really interesting and like new. Uh, I had some friends who had to work with like wolves, which apparently was really interesting because they like, you know, they get the wolves really like hyped up and they're like, they start snapping at you and stuff. Oh, nice. And then eventually they're like, they're like, are we doing another take? And the animal hander is like, oh no, no, we're done for the day because <laughs> they're all fired up now and they want to eat each other. So Yeah. You sure you don't want to hear about when I had to put my dog down? I, I'm just kidding. No one I wants to hear about that. It's awful. Okay. Yeah. okay. You're Thanks. like, oh, do I say no? <laughs> trying to be polite. No, no, you're being polite. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just going for the cheap joke. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, just notice your boots. So cute. Love those. <laughs> You work for the company? What's going on? <laughs> uh, but my question is, do you have any other creative outlets outside of acting? See, this is where I'm really starting to come into problems, where I don't have anything else going on in my life. Um, I've, my friend's a painter, so I've done some painting. Uh, but the paintings aren't good. <laughs> so that's kind of a tough one. <laughs> Art is about expression. Good is subjective. It's what I'm Sure. Thinking. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, no, I've done I've done some painting with him, and that's really fun. I took a pottery class, that was great. Um, I made a very very disappointing ashtray uh, and a very very disappointing teacup, but I had a great time. Um, me, Fergus, who else was there? Cohen. We went to Australia, and Cohen had a friend that he knew from L.A., and he's like, hey, what are you doing right now? And I was like, I don't know. I'm incredibly jet-lagged. He's like, come to this place, and I show up, and then all of us got to uh, make pottery at his friend's house in Australia. That was really fun. Awesome. What's, your, what's your creative outlet? Should I steal it for myself? Oh, I do everything. Like? I draw. I draw. We'll, we'll, we'll draw. Okay. I've tried drawing. It's, it's tough. I can't draw hands, people, Anyone anything. Anyone can draw. Okay. What else? What else you got for me? 
what I do. You say you do everything, so I want to know what everything is. Well, there's crochet. My recent one is like, you know, everyone made sourdough over a pandemic. We can all do that now. Oh, yeah. Um, Recently, I've been making YouTube ambient, like, videos that you, like, work and study to. Like music? Kind of like music. It has to be royalty-free, so it's kind of eh, but you... So you're a musician? No. Oh, okay. I just source it. I just source it. Do you Actually, do the ASMR stuff? No, I can't do that. I think you just You did. hear my voice. I can't do that stuff. No, I don't do that. <laughs> Isn't that... That's what people do, right? Yeah, it's like the... Oh, yeah. Stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. See? <laughs> well, I'm definitely not going to be doing that. I might as well just make a OnlyFans at that point. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> not a bad idea. Uh, I think it'd be a bad idea. It'd be like, how much, how much to see my shoulder, you know? I'd say so much to see my feet, but I realize that's its own economy, and I don't really want to participate in that. It's lucrative, though. You can do it. Is this what you meant by you do everything? You don't need to know. <laughs> You're like, it's lucrative. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Uh, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> feet pics. Got it. Hello. Hey. Long time no see. Yes. Long time no see. So as you know, we always talk podcast and nice murder mysteries. I'm curious, have you watched The Jinx? Oh, yes, I totally watched The Jinx. That was, uh, yeah, it's a reason not to stay mic'd up while you're in a bathroom. I was just curious because I thought about you when I watched it. I'm like, I've got to ask him if he's seen it because if not, you need to watch it. Yeah, no, I've definitely seen The Jinx. I'm trying to think of all time. What's the one, it's like Dear Robert or Dear Matthew or something. And it's, what? Yeah, have you ever seen Dear Zachary? I have not. Don't. It is so depressing. Yes. It's, it's like just heartbreaking. And like to the point when you're watching it, like you're like, oh no, like you just, you get so angry. Um, I haven't really watched much true crime recently though. Check out There's Something Wrong with Aunt Diane. What did Aunt Diane do? Check it out. (laughs) Don't just leave me with that. Check Check it it out. out. We'll talk at your meet and greet. Aunt Diane. Okay. Uh, the one that I've been listening to the most, uh, there's this great podcast called uh, Last Podcast on the Left. Anyone? Yeah? Okay. So I probably listened to the Casey Anthony one like 10 times. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely did that shit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Speaking of Florida, she definitely did that shit. Yeah. She made up... This is great. These are things I want to talk about. She made up her nanny that she'd left her kid at. And then she named the, Z- uh, the, the, the nanny Zeneda Gonzalez. Turned out there was one in the area of Orlando and she called her the Zanny Nanny because she was doing Xanax at the time. Cool lady. She's out and free, on, and free out of prison. So suck a dick, Casey. Hello. Hi. Um... So I don't know if I can actually ask the question that I want to ask because of like... You I'm want to know more Casey Anthony, I know. <laughs> um, so I want to preface this by saying like I'm part of the autistic community and I wanted, so I wanted to see someone on the show that was like me kind of. And when I, when I saw someone that was sort of not understanding um, what, what human nature was and trying to fit in. I really looked up to that. So what was your inspiration for that? Can I um, ask you that? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I can, I can answer the question in a, uh, in a general sense. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people related that to Misha's character as well. Um, I, at the beginning of it, I really didn't think of him as necessarily being on the spectrum or having autism or anything like that. I really was just around the idea of like how it would feel to not recognize human emotion, right? And like not being able to pick up social cues. Or for me, like a problem I often have is like I, <laughs> sounds bad, I believe people when they say something. Like someone today asked me to quote, sign their tits. And they're like, because then it's a pair of birds. Or they're like, would sign my boobs. And it's also a pair of birds. Um, and I was like, I was like, I don't know if I should. Um, and I just didn't understand and I missed the joke. And I was like, oh, now I understand. Um, but yeah, that character was um, definitely struggling to find his place in terms of where he fit with the rest of the humans. So 
um, there's been a lot of times where I've had, uh, you know, people tell me that, that, that they saw that within the character. Um, one of the coolest things for me, I remember at the end of when we were filming, uh, they kind of asked me like what the character meant. And, uh, you know, for me, ultimately the, the biggest thing that I never expected of any of this was that like people see themselves in the character and that resonates with them. And to know that that kind of lives on so much bigger than my own experience has been really, really incredible. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Of course. Hello. Hello. Um, so I have Who's another- your favorite serial killer? <laughs> oh, I don't know. BTK, right. Anyways. Um, so I have another music question. I am a competitive ballroom dancer. Whoa. So I actually just did a routine to carry on. Wait, Falco? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just did a routine to carry on my wayward son. So if you could pick any song to see a routine. Can we see a little bit of it? I have a video of it. That's not what I meant. I don't. <laughs> my partner's not here, so I can't do it. Yeah, but you can lead. Uh, you, are you going to follow? No. <laughs> <laughs> So if you could pick any song to see a dance routine to, what would it be? Uh, to sing or to just be in? For someone to see someone dance. Oh, to see someone dance. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. In like ballroom or anything? Anything. I don't know. I mean, I made a joke about Aqua earlier, but like if Dr. Jones comes on, I mean, you kind of want to dance, right? True. No one. Okay. Uh, if Britney Spears comes on, you want to dance? I've done no one. Routine. If Avenged Sevenfold comes on, you want to dance, right? No one. Okay. <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. I mean, I always, I, I, I grew up in a dance studio, so I watched a lot of dance. Mm -hmm. I did hip hop and musical theater. I tried ballet. I did some jazz. Wasn't very good. Uh, I did a salsa class. Salsa's fun. It was fun, but my friend was assisting the class, so she was really good. And then I went and I was only 19. And the mistake was I didn't realize is that a lot of divorced people go to the salsa class to try to meet people. Absolutely. So it was like me and like middle-aged women. And I was a very skinny, not very secure guy. And then there was this very Spanish man leading the class. He's like, you must take her. You must lead her. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, no, that will not be happening. Uh, that was really scary for me. Um, so don't put me in a salsa class again. Noted. Uh, the ballroom's cool, though. You've been doing that a long time? 16 years. So only a little while. A little bit. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, now, what's your next routine going to be to? Um, I'm doing carry on again, and, but I'm doing unholy. The, the Kim story. Petra one? The, yeah. Yeah. The controversial one? Mm -hmm. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You win. <laughs> no more questions, guys. All right. I will not be freestyling for you, but uh, I've actually never had this happen. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. Uh, I did ask someone on a date once what their favorite serial killer was. <laughs> what did they say? What did they say? Uh, th th they were into it, so it worked out. Um, if there was a second date? Uh, yeah, I said it worked out. <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> okay. I don't, know how you, I don't know how your dates go. But... Uh, what did you say? Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they found like human remains in her trunk and uh, duct tape. The bug stuff? Oh, your friend's dad must be very wealthy. Ah, uh, there's another tip for the person going to college. Don't <laughs> Become a professor, uh, I guess. That's really cool, though. Yeah, I mean, that must be very morbid work, though. Sorry, runs a body farm.
Yeah. Oh, wow. That's tough. Good for them, but that sounds really, really oddly terrifying. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Good for them. Any other questions? I'll, uh, am I allowed to ask your second one? Yeah. You can ask as many questions as you want. They're, these lines are bare. <laughs> Well, we have room for just one more, so it'd be perfect. Make it a good there one. There you go. I was going to say, these are going to be bare like my OnlyFans. <laughs> so, um, I've watched a lot of convention videos and stuff because this is my first one as well, and I was like, what the heck happens? And I've seen... You're seen. <laughs> yes, and I've seen many outfits, obviously, because people change clothes, and I was wondering... <laughs> Um, if you chose what you wore today, or if someone was else was like, Alex, you're going to wear this, and if so, why did you choose what you're going to wear today? I don't have a stylist. It's just me in my hotel room. Uh, I sewed these jeans up by myself. Uh, yep, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, I, no, no one tells me what to wear. You know, it's just me. Why did I wear this? I knew there'd be air conditioning because the United States loves air conditioning. Uh, so I knew it had to be warmer. That was really it. Does Canada not like air conditioning? Not as much as you guys. No, we're content. You guys, it's just like you want to be sweating outside and then just freezing inside. I don't know what it is. It's very American. They don't do it in Europe. Um, maybe you could give me some reasoning. Um, well. You love freedom. I know. I know. <laughs> Yes, but it is the freedom to decide whatever you know. Um, I don't feel very free right now. I just feel cold. Well, I guess we like to realize that freedom comes within the heart, and the heart is what's covered with clothing, and then sometimes we decide to bear our heart to um, whoever is in the room with us, and sometimes we want to cover up. And that's obviously why we use air conditioning. Okay, bold theory. I'm going to land with this one. It's about extremes. Yes. It's about only having two parties in a system. <laughs> it's about being uncomfortable both inside and outside. There you go. There you go. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. I will, uh, I'll be here tomorrow. And yeah, we're around for autographs and photos and, you know, whatever you need. So thanks for coming out, guys. Appreciate it. One more big hand for Alexander Calvert. This is Ross Marquand, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight, which is awesome. So, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.